All right. Welcome back, guys. Uh, we're gonna paint some ships today. Let me see if this thing works. Um, I'm going to try to get my face on here too. Nobody asked for that. Oh, there I am. Well, I hope you enjoyed uh, earlier today the stream with uh, Vajra. That was pretty fun. He's a pretty cool dude. Got to learn about new food and interesting stuff. And he likes to to talk to the talk to the clouds and talk to the sun and all that. I I, I might need to try that sometime. Um, but anyway, uh, for anyone here that's new, I guess I should probably try to show some of the the tools that are going on here in heavy paint. Uh, I know we have a few regulars in here, but for anybody who's new, welcome to heavy paint here. Um, it's a pretty simple program and uh, it's originally designed for plain air painting but you can use it for studies and, and uh, just really quick fun paintings so there's a bunch of these letters up here um, they all stand for something so D is draw F is fill fill is like kind of you draw your shapes like this um, L is a line uh, line radial. Anyway, there's there's a gazillion different tools. Rectangle tools kind of good for, for example, for this the sky. We would I would probably just use rectangle here and draw in the sky like that. And basically, every tool is designed to be as direct as possible, where you don't have to make a selection and then fill it with color. It just makes the color right away as you draw. So it's supposed to, um, I guess, take out a few steps in the process and, and just make it faster for you. There's also color jitter uh, directly up here. So you can make it really go rainbow color or you could make it really subtle by bringing down the co color jitter super low and it's going to just be a soft little variation which I think is nice for making your paintings feel a little bit more alive and more random and just you know natural variation um, on some other tools it works differently so like draw tool it works inside of the stroke each point will have a different color or you can, you know, turn it all the completely off. But honestly, I never really paint with this slider completely off anymore. I've always got a tiny, tiny bit of uh, color jitter. Um, and then also, th this can get a little crazy here if you have, you might have. Um, oh shoot, I'm, my webcam is in front of everything. Sorry guys. <laughs> Th this can get crazy up here when there's if there's too many tools. So by default, you you would. When you first open the program, you, you would only have like a couple tools open. You, yours would probably look something like this. And uh, so there'll be draw, rectangle, chisel, eyedropper, mix, and, and smudge. Oh, smudge is a new thing actually that just uh, came out. Well, I've been working on it the past few weeks. And smudge, I'm pretty excited about it. You just go like this. And you got smudge. Pretty self-explanatory. You can control how noisy it is. Um, so if you want the smudge to be super high detail, let me let me try adding in like brighter color so we can see what's going on. So smudge. We can go higher strength here on the bottom, and it's kind of a cool effect. Um, you can change how noisy how the how big the noise is so if we go super low on the noise it becomes more of a let me turn off the texture more of like a wavy 
I guess, shift type of a thing. And if we make the noise medium, it's sort of like a bigger scale smudge and then super high it, and then it becomes like a really fine bristle brush. So I think that's kind of fun. Fun to just like smudge it around everywhere and play with the paint. Um, and uh, what else do we have? The stretch is kind of interesting. If we make the stretch low, then it has a little bit more of a variation. And it's kind of tough to see on this one, actually. Anyway, aside from smudge, there's also a blur tool now. So if you go all the way down on the smudge amount, it becomes a blur. And then um, you can control the blurriness here. And then this is just like regular blur. It, you can even use it with rectangle if you want to make a square blurry. Make it super blurry. But it's, it's sort of a noisy blur, which I think is kind of cool. If you, you you can, you know, layer it on top of each other and just make it more and more and more blur. You can also add this in with a texture. So let's say you want to blur, but only in uh, the space of a circle. You could do that. You could um, make it blur, but only on lines or like a rake blur. You could... This also works with, with smudge, actually. The... the uh, the rectangle with a smudge is kind of trippy. It, it does this. <laughs> and we turn the noise all the way down, it does that. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> I'm not sure what you would use this for, but I think it's kind of cool. You can also do stuff like, um, let's try mm, circle. Where's the circle? Circle. So the way this tool works normally is you just drag it and it makes a circle. But when you combine it with blur or with smudge, it does like really weird, funky stuff. Oh, oops. Like ripples, I guess. And or if we make this really low, then it, it sort of looks like a, gla a glass ball type of deal. Um, and then without smudge it's just a regular circle like this um, what else we got mix mix is kind of like smudge except it only takes the first and the it, it takes the colors underneath your mouse so if we have a rectangle we drag see it mixes the last color with the first color sort of like that so there's lots of uh, combinations if you just take, I mean, all these tools work together so you can really get a big variety of uh, weirdness going on. Anyway, okay, uh, let's see, will you be creating pen pressure uh, for the iPad? Uh, it's it's on the to-do list, but that that stuff is sort of out of my control. It's um, I'm waiting for the engine to support it that I'm using. But uh, when it when it does support it, it will go in because all the pressure stuff is already set up. It just needs to be enabled, I guess, by the engine. Anyway, let's start to just block this thing out. But yeah, anyway, welcome. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to, to ask away. Um, yeah, I was, I was having fun moderating with uh, Vajra this morning. It's, it's, it's much less stressful to moderate than to be painting. <laughs> um, but it's okay, I'm used to it. I'm used to it. So I'm I'm trying to pick sort of a what is this like desaturated reddish bluish. And I'm just using rectangle here. Maybe the right side of the ship I, I think is a bit brown here. Um, maybe less saturation there. But um, 
yeah, he was saying like, oh, I, I'm so nervous. I've never done this before. And I don't know how to talk while painting and blah, blah, blah. But man, he's, he's a natural. He, uh, yeah, he's doing really good. Actually, it seems like he, he, he can talk. He, he's, he was able to keep the, uh, the, the conversation going, flowing the whole time, even though he's like busy trying to make a masterpiece, which is, is a bit tricky. I, uh, I definitely struggle with that. I'm not, uh, my brain kind of turns off a bit, you know? Um. Alright, and then the last color over here is pretty desaturated, a little bit lighter. Oops. Uh, remember you mentioned a hard mode without color picking that yeah the hardcore mode which is over here in options hardcore mode this takes away the eyedropper so we can't color pick anymore and it actually it helps a lot with colors because then you're forced to you know make more choices and have more colors I guess I could try that here. It's it's uh, see I'm already instinctively reaching for it, so that would mean I have to remake this background color, which uh, I'm close, a little bit too green. Um, but yeah, it gives it gives your painting a little bit more of a natural imperfection, you know. So I like it. Okay, and then this goes here. Pretty bright. Yeah, so a lot of the tools in here, they're made to just be really fast and immediate and sort of gestural, and you don't have to do any setup. It's just like one, one click in it, or one, what you see is what you get, and you just draw. So it's designed to kind of just get out of your way and let you focus on the painting. I think my sky is a, li a little bit too dark, which kind of stinks because I already drew everything around it. Oh well, I'll just leave it. I gotta learn to let go. Okay. But this, the bow of the ship is definitely more blue. <gasps> what did I do? Oh my gosh. Come on, heavy paint. Don't fail me now. You didn't crash for, for Vajra. Why you crash for me? Oh. Embarrassing. Embarrassing. But it's okay. We have autosave. So we're all good. We still got it. Didn't lose too much. I don't know what I did there. Um, it's Heavy Paint is a little bit nervous because... It knows, it, you know, you guys are watching right now. It's a little bit shy program. It's not used to this kind of attention. But yeah, the fill tool actually is one of the first ones that I um, added to this because I've always loved fill tool in uh, this program called Alchemy, which was uh, an older program that had just really weird tools and you can make all these funky shapes really fast and it had weird stuff like mirroring and radial mirroring and, and uh, fill 
all these weird tools I'd never seen before. And I was like, wow, this is kind of awesome. It's so fast and uh, immediate. So I was kind of inspired by that and wanted to make my own sort of version of that. Um, I don't know if any of you guys remember Alchemy. That, that was my favorite. Uh, we also have, what do what we got here? There's a fill poly, which lets you sort of draw lines or draw points in a, in a shape. So if we, let's say we want a diamond shape, we would just start drawing points of the diamond and, and then that's it. Let me try again. Maybe a little bit shallower angle. Like that. try the same thing over here the other stuff so so fill tool is one of my favorites right so there's also all these variations on fill like uh, fill gradient is a sort of a it's like that it's like a fill but with a gradient so you can make really fast shadows and dark little corners and armpit hairs or whatever it's pretty useful. You can do like sun glares with it. Although there's not really much sun to glare in this picture. So I'll go back to fill. I'll go back to regular fill. Let's see. Um, seems like an awesome tool. I'm looking forward to use it for design matrix. Whoa. Design matrix. Color exploration, quick sketches, and other studies. Um, hey, Alex. Yeah. All the alchemy, alchemy people in here. Is there a traditional fill? Um, no, they, there's no selection in heavy paint. So you can think of this fill as a, it's a fill plus, it's a selection plus a fill in one tool. So it's kind of a combo tool here. Um, there's also different types, like fill stretch actually is pretty useful too, because it, you can put textures on it. So you can say, oh, I want a rake a rake fill or I want a gradient fill or a reverse gradient or a forge gradient like a sword swipe gradient or uh, whatever this is I don't know so you can kinda customize these to how you how you want to work Um, so, yeah, it's designed to be very, very simple and basic when you first see it, but it's actually very powerful once you um, start combining all the different little things you can do. And do, do, do. Okay, this goes here. And I should probably try to do more of the smudge stuff because that's the new the new thing. Spent the last couple weeks on it. I've been going to sleep at like 2 and 3 a.m. Just wrists all hurting from uh, doing stupid uh, testing. Testing the, the smudge tool over and over. But I'm, I'm excited about it. 
like let's see what we can do it, it even works with um, these fill the fill tools so you could use your fill as sort of a palette knife thing and swipe swipe it like that it's kind of weird it makes the boat look like it's really going fast a speedboat now. <laughs> uh, need to, yeah, we need a, a drag racing version of this boat. Would be cool. With a giant wing and and fire coming out of the back. Okay, I'm going to bring back the eyedropper because I'm a little bit nervous. <laughs> I want to look like I, I know what I'm doing here. So let me try eyedropper. Let's try chisel. And go sideways a little bit. I'm still kind of tuning the the uh, smudge brush or smudge tool. To me, it, it right now it feels a little a little bit too wet. Like the paint is very very wet, and I want to try to make it so that it could have a little bit of dry brush. And I think maybe adding in some texture like one of these other textures, it it does make it feel a little bit more dry. But I think it could be better. Okay, let's try to get this, I think this, this side is more red, right? So also in Vajra's um, demo today, we were talking about color a little bit, how at least I feel like color, the hard part about color is not mixing the color. The hard part about color is actually seeing the color. Um, seeing the color that's there. Once you know what color is there, you, you can mix it no problem. So, it's just being, it's about being more sensitive to what's in front of you. Because I know many, I mean, like, uh, I can sort of feel myself seeing more colors the more I paint or noticing colors where where I where I didn't notice them before and maybe I don't know could also be just even just looking for colors where they <laughs> where you you kind of pass over them without thinking about it which I'm sure I'm doing here like I'm sure I'm missing stuff. I think the water's like more green. And then that means this boat is, the bottom of the boat is more, it's darker. It's definitely darker than the water.
that's enough smudge for right now, I think. I, uh, it works really good for giant swaths of, of paint, but then when you're doing little smaller shapes, it's, it's a little bit harder to get it to work like how you want it. weird stuff going on in the side of the boat. Right? Am I crazy? I think it's... But it's... It's actually lighter than the, than the red part. It's tough to see it. Maybe I'll try to exaggerate um, one side of the ship just to make it look like it has some light on it. It's really weird lighting here. smudge into there. I'm using fill and just like swiping down to try to get the paint to behave there. Come on. Get in there. tiny bits on the top maybe we can do it with rectangles with uh, some color jitter so it jumps around a little bit
So, yeah, I'm not sure what else. I guess, um, yeah, for anyone who's never, ever heard of heavy paint, which is probably most of you, uh, the, it's, um, it's on everything. So you can get it on your Blackberry, your Palm Pilot, your Pager, your refrigerator, your smart fridge. No, I'm just kidding. It's but it is on um it's on iOS, Android, Windows, Mac, Linux, and that's it. But I think that's that's already a lot. And and it's also free if you want to try it. Um, we used to do on the stream like maybe over a year ago we used to do this thing called morning guts where we would do drawings and paintings and like warm ups and stuff every every morning and uh, just draw little cars and trucks and uh, and then do a little critique afterwards I should probably get back to that at some point but those were always fun because everyone would sort of jump in and participate but I guess we could also look at some of the um, we can look at some of the paintings that people have done on uh, on Instagram so if you go on to uh, uh, Instagram and search heavy paint let me bring this up. Let's take a quick look. Um, yeah, so this is how, basically how I found Vajra. And uh, a lot of the artists are just doing really crazy stuff. Um, And uh, some of these artists are, are going like every day, basically, 365 series. <laughs> and it's really awesome to see the, the grind, like the progress. Oh, Bjorn is crazy good. He's a traditional painter. Um, Lyndon, Lyndon Lee will be uh, also demoing um, tomorrow at 11 a.m. if anyone's interested to watch Linden. But Linden's uh, one of the original heavy painter people and he, he's he been going like n on a streak. I heard that he used to be a, a what you would call it, a monk? Or what, what was it? Not a monk. I don't know, He was he was doing some kind of discipline studies and and I think maybe that's rubbed off on his art because he's been you know really non-stop practicing every single day it's really cool um, and he he's still using like the the draw brush he, he, he or the draw tool he only uses one or two tools <laughs> Which is even more amazing. Let me see. There's Caleb. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I'm I'm excited because this uh, smudge brush just came out, and I'm um, starting to see. Uh, some people like Patrick is are starting to use it and uh, you know I'm curious to see what an actual painter would do with with uh, smudge you know because I'm kind of just pretending a little bit like yeah this I love this um, Nicholas Uribe study
yeah, I think this the fill fill tool with smudge has some potential to be like a palette knife type of a tool. All right, so how do I keep adding to this without messing it up? Or without making it worse, I guess is the question. Without making it worse. Oh geez, so I guess my uh, chat was broken this whole time, so now I'm finally getting to see what you guys were saying. Uh, hello, <laughs> oh my god, I was like wow, it's very quiet. Um, let's see, do do do. Alchemy, we're talking about alchemy. Is a smudge on the iPad? I just published it like maybe an hour ago, so it just check your app store. It might it might show up soon. Um, a bit more green in your dark blue on the bow of the ship. Yes, I think so. <laughs> like in this little transition area over here, right? Yeah, I think so. I'll I'll put a note there. A little, a little color note. Yes. Green. Oh, why am I drawing with my mouse? Am, am I crazy? Although that's how people used to do it, apparently, before they invented the Wacom. <laughs> uh, yeah, apparently that's like Craig Mullins was a mouse painter for many years before. Okay. Uh, what else am I saying here? Oh, hey, it's Modern J James. Hello. YouTube is my domain. Are you saying that you you're the king of YouTube? The king of art YouTube? I've been, I've noticed there's a lot more art YouTube errs lately. It's kind of crazy, and even art YouTube drama with the Jake Parker and the Alfonso thing and it's like wow are we an actual industry now there's there's like pundits and stuff <laughs> it's kind of funny uh let's see modern day James you should start an art video stream using heavy paint mm. that would be cool uh, hey Jonathan you know, wearing the color scheme. Oh shoot, I am kind of salmon and teal today. Um. Hello, Ben. I'm definitely not the king of art, YouTube. Yeah, man. I I hope you'll give it a try sometime. It's uh. It's a little bit funky at first I think most people's reaction when they first try it is like ew gross and then they sh turn it off right away <laughs> but 
but if, if you give it a chance it's it's okay um I am also an art YouTuber YouTuber with 150k subs. Gee, that's awesome. Let's collab YOLO. Oh, dang. <laughs> um, yeah, maybe we can do some heavy paint. Uh, do, 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 do. Can I ask about the process of making the app? Yeah, sure. Um, I guess I can say that it started as a weekend project. Um, because I, I got this little phone. I'm going to show... I mean, here, it's this little Samsung phone, the Note, which I think is a very underrated tool because, um, you know, everyone's all about the iPads. But this thing, you know, the, the Samsung phones, they for years they've had the uh, pen built in and this is a Wacom pen and the, the tracking and everything is Wacom. So it's, it's really good. It's like... I can't ask for anything more. It, it works really good. And um, so I wanted to paint on that thing. And I kind of just wanted to make a little tiny app just, just for fill tool. I mean, I basically just wanted this fill. And um, so I just made a little mini program like that. And then during the, you know, course of making that, I, got, I just got really into it. And then now here we are uh, like two years later and I'm still working on it. <laughs> um, well, he said, I love the simplicity. Yeah, it se thanks man. I, I, it seems like uh, most people appreciate the lack of tools actually, which is, is good for me because that means, I mean, I don't really have that many tools. but. <laughs> But people seem to like not having that many tools. Um, yeah. Samsung Note is so underrated in the art community, partly why. Yeah, yeah, I think it is. Like, uh, the other cool thing about this is I, I use this to paint 99% of the time just for the fact that I, I have this in my pocket all the time and you know, the iPad, you don't have it with you. You know, you use this when you're sitting, waiting for the doctor or just sitting around. Anytime you're bored, you can just start painting. So that is a big, a big thing for in the Samsung favor. Yeah, so, I, I mean, it started off as a weekend project. I was just doing it for myself, and then, and then uh, I, you know, posted it on my Instagram, and then I got a few people saying, hey, can I try it? What is this thing? You're like, what the hell? Why are you, why are you making a program now? <laughs> and then, and then I would, like, send them the, uh, the APK file. And they would have to m manually install it on their phone, and it was all janky. And and then eventually it got to the point where it's like, okay, I can't keep doing this anymore. It's too janky. So I started, I, I got got it all official and got it published on um, on the App Store and everything, and and the Google Store and blah blah blah. And um, and then at this point now, I've been working on this for, yeah, I think around almost two years, and I've never worked on anything this long before. <laughs> this is now my main uh, my main thing, and it's it's been really exciting to do it. It's exciting because usually I'm I'm sort of a loner person, you know. I don't really interact that much with people, <laughs> as you can probably see. And uh, but now this this project is kind of like forcing me to talk 
to lots of people and meet people and um you know i mean it's mostly just people complaining about bugs and stuff and i have to fix them but that's still cool because i get to see like what's working and what's not working and you know what i need to fix um what i have to improve you know sometimes you see lots of people complaining about the same thing over and over then i'm like okay maybe um maybe the way i'm doing it is not the best way i need to uh change it so it's um yeah it's like this whole learning experience and then the best thing about it too is just waking up and seeing all the paintings that people do is really cool um sometimes it's pretty unbelievable i like i yeah i remember the first the first times i when i first posted it and like the first painting started coming in it was always it's just such a a cool feeling to to see them like wow somebody made that on this thing um And uh, I've been able to find a lot of cool artists, too, just from watching the hashtag, like uh, Vajra. And um, there's there's tons of people that are, like, really consistent and really awesome on uh, Instagram on the uh, heavy paint hashtag. That's been really fun to watch. Um, so do you, oh, Modern Day James says, do you, do you do all the programming in C++ or Python? Well, it's, uh, programmed in a game engine called Godot, Godot, and that's, a, this is an open source, um, video game engine. So it's not really designed for making a painting app. So a lot of the stuff is a little bit hacky and janky, but, um, we, I kind of managed to get it to work and, uh, the... The language that it uses is called GD Script, but it's basically it's very similar to Python, so it's 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 more like Python, but you can do C++ in it. I just don't I don't know C++. Um, I think it's an awesome tool in the making. At least that's what it's looking like. All right, <laughs> thanks. Do you have to worry about adding too many options and taking away from the beauty of the app? Yes, actually, uh, Landon, like, um, that's happened already in its short life is, uh, I've, I've added some things and then the menus become more complicated. And then I've heard people say like, you know, it was better before. Can we bring it back to how it was before? And, and that's a little bit tough to hear. It's like a little bit heartbreaking because you spend a lot of time working and then they're like, eh, no, <laughs> but that kind of forced me to rethink a lot of the menus and and just reorganize and streamline and consolidate and and then now it's it is redone and things are more streamlined and and it it's much much better now because of it so yeah it happens it's like um as you add more features you have to sort of rethink even your older features because now with the new stuff maybe it doesn't really fit with how the old stuff worked and you might have to redo stuff. Um, so it's like a back and forth thing. But yeah, the UI is very, very, it's like 90% of the work is UI on this kind of a thing. The tools are actually relatively simple. Um, but the UI is, is really, really kind of, it's, the UI is supposed to feel very simple, but behind the scenes, it is very complex because it's it's very context sensitive and it's like it's always trying to sort of predict what you are trying to do and um, present things to you in the cleanest way. 
and save you from unnecessary clicking, which means it has to like know what you want to do before you do it. <laughs> Um, congrats, man. That's, I'm going to download it. Okay, cool. Let me know what you think. Uh, do, 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 do. The app changed a lot of things for me. That's, that's good. Great to hear. Hey, Chris. It's been a while, Chris. <laughs> um, let's see. 10 Mammoth. Thank you. Um, I feel with this app, I'm less consciously designing shapes, but I run into happy accidents in choosing good shapes. Okay. <laughs> Are there tools and UI things that you'll never put in? Well, I, I thought for a long time that I would never have a zoom or a pan, but then I ended up doing it. <laughs> so, so I would say no, there's nothing that I would never put in. Maybe maybe no clip art. I don't think I don't think I'll ever have clip art or um gifs. Would there be gifs in there? Would that be useful guys? Little animated gifs. Uh what else? The grass brush? But I already kind of have a grass brush. The I guess the uh brow is sort of like a grass brush. My version of grass brush. No layers ever. <laughs> oh god, you guys are impossible. Impossible to please. Uh, <laughs> I didn't know that happened to us on this. Alright, cool. It's working. The stream is working, guys. People might actually download heavy there's a zoom now yeah yeah there's a zoom before it used to be like this like you you would just have to go like this but now um now you now there's different ways to zoom uh yeah yeah, yeah. feels like that's part of h o part part of ho what what are you talking about jesse Um, could you show the zoom? Oh, yeah, yeah. So zoom in desktop is middle mouse and right mouse is pen. On mobile, you should be able to pinch, pinchy pinch for zoom. Um, and, and I know it sounds very basic, but it took me like over a year to get that in there because <laughs> I'm slow. I'm a slow dum-dum. And I don't really know how to program, guys. So everything is a bit of trial and error. Slowly learning. But... And, and actually, I love it. I, I really enjoy programming. Because um, it's like a puzzle. It's like a weird mind puzzle. <laughs> uh... But I like that kind of stuff. Okay, let's see if I can smudge again a little bit. Well, <laughs> no. 
No. No. Ooh. Oops. Is this making it worse? Is that cool? Is it cool? It kind of looks like water ish. <laughs> Cheap water. Oh no, that's so cheesy. Is it too cheesy? My cheap water tricks. Whoa. Oh. That's kind of neat. Ooh. Is that cool? Or is it dumb? Let's see. Whoa. Oh, no. Uh, can you explain how you managed to recover the drawing when it closed? Yeah, you just open it up again. So let's say I'm painting here and I'm like, oopsie, I lost my painting. You just open it up again. And it, it should be auto-saved automatically. Uh, let's see, where are we? Come on, open. Where are you? Here you are. And then just go up to the saved area and it should open up automatically. We can watch a little replay. Um, I give you a gum gum. Oh, thank you. Uh, Jonathan says you mentioned it's the main thing now. Did you mean it's the main painting app or has developing become my full-time job? Uh, kind of both. It's, yeah, this is my, this is what I do now, full time. Um, for now, you yeah, know, it's my main project. <laughs> Heavy paint has inspired a change in how I paint in other apps like Photoshop. That's cool. Do you just not make layers now? <laughs> Um, I suppose hard, soft brush smooth smudge are hard to program with vector graphics or like Photoshop. Yeah, the the smudge so far has definitely been the most uh, challenging, challenging tool. But very, I'm pretty excited with the results so far. Especially with Phil, it's like a weird palette knife type weirdness. But yeah, it's nice when you do little circle, circle swipes with it, like a semi-circle swipe. Whoa, that's kind of weird. I don't know if you guys can see my mouse. I hope I hope you can, because otherwise it looks like a ghost is painting this boat here. Yeah, it's nice for just messing up the edges a little bit. What am I doing? Okay, oh, this goes here. 
Um, I see. I saw something about voice. Voice. Act oh, Chris is saying uh, voice activated tools like hard brush, color swatch, thirty four erase. <laughs> That would be crazy. Imagine doing a painting without using your hands. You just tell it what to paint, like cool salmon salmon bridge, ship bow, teal, or maybe you you t you tell it like RGB RGB values, you're like and coordinates. You would say line tool zero zero one six zero one two five, and then it like paints a line with this, this certain color there, that would be crazy. Mm. Well, yeah, that that or uh, Neuralink would be interesting to paint with too. It'd be great to just, imagine if you could just will a painting into existence. Just think it, and then it happens. Okay. What else do I need here? This boat. It's leaning pretty hard here. I'm not sure if I like it. Is it too much lean? I feel like there should be um, more of an... Oh, I like the angle there, actually. I don't like it being too curved. I'll try that. This is more red, I think. Come on, get up there, okay. Oh damn, these boats going fast. ship looks laid back yeah. it feels like a crime to use layers now that's awesome oh we need this little uh, circle in the front that's Probably the coolest part, actually. I guess we can zoom in. Oh, the other cool thing that we got recently is um, you can zoom, you can rebuild the painting at any resolution. So, for example, if we want to turn this into a uh, pixel art, we can go up here. And then canvas size and make it down to, uh, you know, pixel art. And you're like, okay, that's fine. A any program can really do that. Cool. But uh, you can also make it super high res. So we're going up to 4,000 pixels now. And there it is. So you can go back and forth any resolution you want doesn't lose any quality because it's because uh, it's magic
It uses magic technology, guys. Magic technology. Okay. And the other thing, too, about this system is that you can um what you call it you can work in lower res with this in mind so i you know if my device is struggling at 4000 pixels then maybe i want to work at a uh, 1000 pixels and that's totally fine cuz you know at the end of the day you can always export it at super high res and without losing any detail so it's very friendly for you know your older devices or phones and whatever. I should get this mic out of my face a little bit. It's uh, it's a little bit distracting. <laughs> it's a little bit too close. This is um borrowing uh, Michelle's new mic. I think it sounds better than the one that I was using before, because uh, I guess this type of microphone it it it's designed to like go focus directly in one direction, and and the other mic I had was more like to go in every direction so it was picking up all the street noise and all this background stuff and you can hear people washing their dishes and blah 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 and i think this mic is a lot more focused a lot better for this kind of a thing i should have done my research i should have done my research why isn't this going Uh, maybe I should go back to my old tried and true rake for this kind of thing. Yeah. Sometimes the old way is best. Okay, there's a lot of interesting variation in this front panel, actually. There's, there's like a little bit of red, rusty up here. It's like it's blushing a little bit. And then there's some blue. So maybe instead of trying to make it blue, since it's so subtle over here in the corner, I, I'll try to make it less, ye less yellow. And that, that'll, maybe that's enough.
Man, I forgot about the rake rake tool. I missed you, rake. Uh, people that use RGB are psychos. Okay. <laughs> um, I guess I'm a psycho then. Will there be different kind of sliders? Yeah, yeah. There's different ones. You can go up here. There's RGB. There's HSV, and also the hue box. By the way, which one do you guys use? of everyone that's here are you uh, rgb hsv or hubox because i'm still not sure which one should be the default like when you first open uh lab oh my gosh what a hipster with your lab color <laughs> uh, hsv rgb Oh man, look at look at all these psychos in here. What is it? Never understood Rob. Never will. Yeah, that Rob. He's a he's a weird one. Rob. Silly Rob. I was making pancakes the other day. Um, sca Taiwanese scallion pancakes. This story has nothing to do with anything, by the way. But I was making pancakes, and the instructions said to, you know, use oil, and put it in the pan, and use your. What do they call it? Use your flipping shovel to turn it over <laughs> to turn over the pancake <laughs> I was like man that's such a good name for a spatula a flipping so shovel I'm gonna totally use that word from now on instead of spatula who wants to use a spatula I got a silicone flipping shovel right here I'll flip your pancakes no problem. I've been flipping pancakes since before you were born. I'm sorry, that was another pointless story. Not even a story. See, this is why I I can never... Eh, oh my gosh. This is why I'm, I'm programming a, a, draw, a drawing tool instead of making animations because I don't have the story mind my brain only works in zeros and ones and beeps and boops I uh, unfortunately never learned the art of storytelling People really like stories. I wonder if everyone... Oh, I need this. Maybe I should just stop talking. I'm digging my hole deeper with my shoveling stick. My flipping stick shovel. Wait, no. My flipping shovel. Um, 
when do we get the Jamaican accent? Oh man, the Jamaican accent's been retired for so long. But just because you're here. What am I going to say? I'm going to talk about my flipping shovel. Making pancakes last night. Scallion, scallion pancakes with my flipping shovel. Deliciousness. You know, I have to add some Caribbean sunshine to it. Make it sing. The flavors. Deliciousness. Mm. Maximum deliciousness. <laughs> yeah. Well, nobody asked me what my favorite food is, but I would, I think I would have to say Jamaican food is my favorite. And I, I love all kinds of foods, but something about that Caribbean sunshine and uh, just the yeah the herbs the, the sweet the spicy the and the mackerel I love mackerel too and yeah it just all feels very comforting Oxtail. Um, yeah, anyway. Worcestershire sauce. Do you guys cook with Worcestershire sauce? the most difficult sauce to pronounce but it's very delicious Worcestershire I don't even know if that's the correct way to pronounce it because it the bottle makes it's spelled like Wor Worcestershire sauce but, but I always hear Wor Wor Worcestershire sauce Any plans to add a color wheel or other color pickers? We just talked about this. There's different color pickers up here. Doot, 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 doot. Beep, 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 beep. Worcestershire. Worcestershire. Oxtail. Oh man, you've never had oxtail. I'm jealous. Because now when you get your first oxtail, your mind is going to be blown. It's like the most fattiest, delicious, rich, um, magical part that you can eat. It's delicious. It just falls off the bone into your tummy. Mm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Yep. I have to put the chisel right here. Chisel right here so we can make this orange bit, the salmon pop out, peeking out, peek out right here. Yeah, I wish there was a B Jamaican Bob Ross. That would be awesome. I'm going to add some happy banana tree. And some yummy coconuts. Yes. Don't forget to paint the chickens. Roaming around, stomping on all, all my herbs. 
Add in the time. I'm getting hungry now. I'm getting hungry. Okay, it seems like everyone pronounces it Worc Worcestershire, even though it's spelled Worcestershire. Fun fact, Bob Ross after was a perm, and he hated it. Why did he do it then? Was he, like, forced to do it by the network? They're like, you have a perm and you're going to like it. You think people watch you for your stupid paintings? They watch you for your perm. You're nothing without us. Oh, it was his manager. Dang. Can you confirm Smudge now exists on iPad? Yay! <laughs> Even I'm not sure. I, uh, I'm, I, I'm always, like, on edge until it actually works. Um, I have a question about color jitter. Don't you think that the hue randomized amount should be influenced by the saturation? It is. Um, like if you're using gray, then it doesn't, uh, it doesn't jitter. Oh, do you mean like it should compensate, reverse compensate? Because like the less saturation you have, the less jitter there will be, basically because the jitter is a multiplier of saturation. So if you're like high saturation, then th it looks crazy because, are you saying like at low saturation, it should look like, I don't even know if that's possible because you would need that, the high saturation in order for it to look that way. Compensate, so so you, you think that if there's higher jitter, then it should, increase the sat saturation because that's that's a little bit weird because you know it, let's say your thing is down here low saturation then it would be kind of unpredictable because then your saturation would be really high even though you're you set it down here um, unless you are talking about something else that I'm missing I mean, it should jitter less if you're saturated. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, yeah, could be. Yeah. Hmm. Maybe. But then... If it jitters less when the saturation is high, then if you have it at max jitter, would it be like not this jittery? It would, it would be more like down here somewhere. Yeah, maybe. Not sure. I kind of like that it, it's sort of auto. Or I mean, it, it's a multiplier of the saturation so that you sort of get variation in it. Anyway. Non-linear. 
So exponentially. Or, or I mean an exponential control there. Hello, Arv. Yeah, I could try exponential and see how it feels. Some, sometimes exponential works better. Um. Okay, what am I missing here? If I had five more minutes to work on this it would be a bunch of little sticks everywhere probably add in extra details make them go up and down make everybody have equal amounts of detail actually no that's not that's not right make everyone have different variations of detail can't have everyone being the same as boringness. <laughs> Don't forget about the eighty twenty rule. Want to have everybody the golden ratio. Don't know about the golden ratio. My goodness. What are the schools teaching these children? Nothing. They don't know about the golden ratio. That is uh, a shame. Embarrassment. Just kidding. Yeah. I am starting to, starting to feel like uh um what you call it? Uh, what am I saying? That math. Sorry, math. My brain <laughs> is very linked to art and painting and all this stuff and shapes and geometry it all kind of connects color and math go together also light and math go together we think of art as being like some kind of magic mystical voodoo but it's actually kind of scientific I think. That would be the worst artist statement ever. Thank God I'm not a fine artist. I think artists like math. <laughs> like, uh, the collectors would immediately just burn all my paintings. I think this guy's a. This guy has no soul, he has no heart.
art is like meth, Eric. Uh, that's interesting. I have degrees in applied math. Excuse me, I have a degree in applied mathematics and totally agree with you about art, math, and music. Ah, oh, yeah, music too. Totally. Music's like even more obviously math because everything is like equations and stuff, literally. And numbers. Yeah. Yeah, it's cool. I feel like I'm, I'm, when I'm, when I'm trying to like read about, um, you know, vector math and how to get the things to move around and whatever and transforming colors and, and it's like, oh wow, yeah. Art is math. Art is numbers. I use meth white in my highlights. Oh my god. You guys are crazy. This is a an interesting crowd here. Why do I always attract the crazy people to my stream? Can I have... Can I have Can I just have one stream without meth in it? Is it because I'm from Florida? Do crazy people just automatically find me? It's because I use RGB. Oh, right. All the psychos come out when you switch to RGB. Florida man creates painting app designed for plein air painting and quick shapes and color generation. How come you never hear that headline? It's always about the, uh, you know, other Florida men. Florida man goes to college and studies to become a lawyer or doctor. What happened to that Florida man? How can we never hear about those Florida men? I learned to use RGB after seeing one of you live, and now I'm addicted to it. Okay. Well, don't get addicted to anything else from this stream, okay? Only RGB. staying too close to the picture which is my eternal curse need to ditch the picture and just forget that it exists for a second I just can't 
can't stop myself. Gotta try, gotta get that RGB. One more, one more slide, man. Meth is bad, yes. You know what RGB? <laughs> what would the school program be called for, for saying no to RGB? There's dare. So there's like dare to be, dare to be HSV. Dare to be HSV. RGB is not for me. RGB is not for me. Uh, what else would they say? It's uh, dare to be RGB free. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> and then they they have like people come visit the school from prison to talk about the dangers of RGB. <laughs> I was using RGB for years. <laughs> it got too green. <laughs> I couldn't figure out what saturation I was at anymore. I didn't even know. <laughs> okay. Well, I think, oh my God, it's a gateway app. Okay, guys, I think we're going to um, end it here because we are quickly going downhill. But thank you very much for joining in again. And uh, I want to let you know that tomorrow, Mr. Lyndon Lee will be here to do a more wholesome painting, I think. Um, so I hope you'll join for that. And uh, the I think the time, is, yeah, it's going to be 11 a.m. PST, same channel right here where you are so go look at look at the event it's uh, it's already up if you want to um go check out linden's uh thing and then after that we're gonna have angela sung who is another crazy good painter out here so i hope you guys will uh join in for some more heavy paint and hope i mean i hope you'll actually do some paintings with us that would be cool maybe we should do like a little critique thing at the end Maybe. I don't know. Whatever. Well, we didn't really plan for that, but... Okay. Okay, see you guys next time. And have a good rest of your Lightbox day. Bye-bye.